We'll be heading to Chennai today. Hi Arun. His first track session. Oh, with uh, blind spot detection. Yes. Nice. I'm sure a lot of uh, the viewers would be interested in this small store you set up there in the background. <laughs> <laughs> That's my bike. Pretty stock looking bike. I think under seat exhaust, no rear seats this time. But man, this looks sexy. Any uh, tense moments or close calls on the track? Yeah, there was one. I was kind of scared to do these open sessions because... Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are and when watching this, welcome to a new vlog. Just traversing from Hyderabad traffic and heading to Arun's place where I'll drop this car off and get on board the Isuzu where we'll be heading to Chennai today. It's almost what 10.30 so by the time we start it'll be 11 or the bikes and all are mounted. Unlike in this car where it took me 9 hours to reach Chennai or roughly 750 kilometers, in that car it's gonna be 11-ish hours because we have a bike in the back even though it's securely mounted we're gonna take it slow and uh, drive it not more than maybe 90 to 100 just to make sure the bike's in good condition but this is the first time we both are doing it so it'll be a good experience and hopefully uh, we don't get too late because we need to get up early tomorrow and head to the track but everything's packed we just need to drive and have some fun hope you guys too I'll show you how the mounting and other stuff works uh, in this vlog. It'll be more of uh, the experience of taking an Isuzu to the track than the track sessions because this session is just an open one where I go round and round and try to improve my speeds. Hopefully, we can uh, get under 220 this time. That's the target. Let's see. Bike's secure. Bags are secure. Both of us are secure with our seat belts. Hi Arun, his first track session, so must be super excited, but his eyes are on the bike. <laughs> so there is a bit of tense uh, concern just to see a bike on the background. So most of the time I see him putting an eye on the mirror while also on the road. But as you saw earlier, we mounted it. Uh, it was a smooth experience. Initially it got stuck and we were like, shit, the, we need to figure out why it happened. But all these are trail and errors that we'll learn on the way because this is the first time that both of us are doing something like this. I don't think we'll have space for two bikes in the future, no? So this is like only one bike, either your GS or, or, the, or your Triumph Scram uh, Thruxton or oh, this. This fits all three bikes, enough space and the mounting system is automated so easy. You just need to follow the steps correctly and it will come off pretty easily. In that regard, good job uh, by Pitch Shop. Excited for your first track session? Until I reach it. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, look at the stuff in the back. <laughs> he has even gotten new tires. I had like three bags back there. He had two helmets, two sets of tires, one bike. Do you have any other bike waiting there? Just no, in case. One set of tires. One set of one tires. On the bike. <laughs> one on the bike. One on the bike. Basically, the tires I'm carrying are the Rosso Corsas that came with the bike when I okay. first bought it. I had taken them off so that you know I can uh, use it for the street and okay. I put the pilots. Hopefully, we can get them changed because Rosso Corsas would be better on the track any day. There are mechanics there to support us, so if we have chance, because they usually do small stuff, changing tires would take time. So we'll see. We'll uh, if they are uh, if they do it. Nothing beats that. Just good to have that option. Yes. You can't go buy a tire there and do it. Now. So it's better to carry your own tires. And there's a lot of space. In fact, except the bike in the background, there is nothing else in the back side. So usually people load most of their bags in the background, have two people, two extra people sit here. So that's more like a party function. But <laughs> here, because this is the first time, we're taking it easy, loading our luggages. The Isuzu truck is also recently purchased, fully kitted out, something maybe around 18 or something. Good price for 30,000 kilometers, cars in a very good condition. And it came fully kitted, right? With all the, with some yeah, decently like way good more parts. than I could ask for. Yeah. So. For the price, I think it's a steal. This is like my dream setup in the future. Hmm. Have like an Isuzu, go to the track, mount it, finish my ride and come back. Because I can leave an RC390, but let's say I get a Panigal or Resto than RR, I can't leave it in a garage. It's too risky to leave it for a month with someone else, irrespective of how much you trust. This is a better setup. Only thing we need to test in this trip is, how much do we have patience in doing this repeatedly, like every month? 
I'm sure with your training schedule, this is probably once in three months or four months. Right? Yeah, I am. I'll have to space it out in once in three months. Yeah. I mean, even this trip itself was a little stressful for some of my clients, but thankfully I have a good team and few clients are traveling as well because it's on Friday Saturday. Huh. If it was a Saturday Sunday, it would just be perfect. But because it's Friday yeah. Saturday, that's one solid working day for me that I'm not there. This school has uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday is an open session, only an open session. Friday and Saturday is open and level one training or level two and open. So he'll be doing level one. I'll be doing the open session. I'm scared for the open session because apparently it's no holds bar. Everyone's kind of free to do whatever they want. And last time in the California Superbike School event, I was going on the main straight. I was turning on the Apache, and an Esso Nara just flew by me. He overshot the braking point. It was just maybe a few milliseconds when I was about to turn, I noticed the bike. Another 700 kilometers to go, decently long, but I think we should be reaching there by 10 o'clock. We'll mm. stop for uh, my lunch. He already has his packed meals. My wife was asking, how are you gonna eat? Are you gonna be conscious with Arun being around and you not eating healthy stuff? <laughs> because whenever I travel, I randomly eat within the calorie counts, but which is why I'm carrying my meal, so that I don't stress you about being picky about the food. My food is sorted, I'll probably give you company with a coffee or whatever, and then you can eat whatever you want to eat. No, I, I'll be still a bit conscious in terms of how I eat, so, but that's okay, we'll figure it out. Not here to judge. <laughs> That's a new one now. Oh, with the uh, blind spot detection. Yes. Nice. It has features on the new one now. They already revealed it. Just reached the hotel and it's almost what? 145. <laughs> That's almost 13 and a half hours since we started. We started around 12.15 or 12.30. I think Arun drove most of the time for probably 70% of the time. We were confident as the distance went by. On a whole, pretty uh, straightforward ride. We are, you have seen this route in the last uh, video of mine, last trip to here. Uh, there was some traffic jam late when we were closer to Chennai, but otherwise all good. We stopped for uh, dinner at the same place I stopped for lunch last time. Uh, your diet must be different this time, thanks to me. More South Indian food, a bit of cheat meal, I guess. Well, today this happened to be a good day to cheat, <laughs> given that I was stopping by all these restaurants and I didn't want to miss the opportunity to eat some good roadside, highwayside food rather. Yeah. So it was worth it. But I think now that we are in the city, we should be able to manage. To yeah, I think it should be good for tomorrow and after. I, I mean, depending on the energy we have tomorrow once the session's done. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure a lot of uh, the viewers would be interested in this small store you set up there in the background. <laughs> <laughs> because typically when... It's my we, mini pharmacy. <laughs> Typically when we come, we put the clothes and maybe some electronic gadgets like that for display, but this is something new. <laughs> so that's all just for you for two days? I mean, obviously I'm not taking all of it, <laughs> but I need to take all each of them because I don't do multivitamins and stuff. So I take like each thing. So like my magnesium is separate, my ashwagandha is separate, my collagen is separate, my omega-3 is separate, oh, wow. my potassium that I'm having now, that is separate. So I take individual doses of uh, okay. each vitamin and mineral. That's dedication just to carry everything in all the bags. Luckily, we are in a car. If you are in flight, would you have the same setup? No, then I would just pack, pack enough their... for each day, which takes more time. <laughs> but then that's what I would have done. But then since I had the luxury of just Did anyone stop you uh, at security? Why all these medications? I was in France in 2021 when I was going to Budapest for a client on the way to uh, this thing when we were flying through France uh, I had all my supplements in my hand baggage and every security I had to remove it <laughs> show them what it is and then they were like ah oh, okay fine go so <laughs> but yeah that's that's the maximum hassle I've had which I don't mind mm. uh, because it gives me the convenience to carry stuff so yeah we'll have a dedicated interview with him <laughs> official interview with him because I'm sure you would have tons of doubts. Best way to reach him out is on Instagram. I'll link the ID in the description. You'll have a better idea because I had some of those doubts before. I don't want to 
take up the entire topic now because we're super <laughs> tired we want to sleep because we want to get up early the reporting times at 8:30 so we need to get up by 6:37 get ready and head to the track man so that's his first session so we'll have a good uh, hopefully good sleep and uh, yeah, i'm super excited yeah first super session first track session first, first time on your aprilia tuono it's like Three years in the making. I got my fair to honor in February 2019, and now finally yeah. in not even three years. It's four years. Wow. After four years, I'm finally doing a track day with the tour. So very excited to see. Worth all the uh, effort of coming from Hyderabad by taking your own bike all the way till here. I know how the first track uh, ride feels. Uh, you'll have some butterflies in the stomach, but it should be fine. So we'll catch you guys tomorrow at the track where we'll show you how we unload the bike. You might have seen how we have uh, loaded the bike onto the track. It's pretty automated and simple, but you just need to make sure few things are aligned and placed correctly when you're doing it. It's not fully automated, maybe semi-automated. This setup would cost probably 90,000, right? As you said. The most expensive thing is the winch. So if you can get a winch, the setup would be pretty easy to have on an Isuzu. I mean, you can have a ramp, mount it manually, and then tie that down with ratchet straps. But I and he was also very concerned with how people misplace the bike when they're loading the bike on the ramp or taking it off. You might have seen so many YouTube videos, right? So that's why this automated uh, system kind of helps in that way. We'll show you more uh, tomorrow on the track. That's my bike. So Motor Dynamics is the uh, rental provider for this bike. Pretty stock looking bike. I think under seat exhaust, no rear seats this time. We have some uh, tank pads which will assist with the grip. I think this is a pretty stock looking BS3 bike. Just letting it warm up for a while. There are three groups. One is an advanced group and then I'm in the intermediate section and there is a level one class that's going on. That's where our run is. So we'll have three groups running an hour, 20 minutes each alternating with a classroom for open there is no classroom you just come back and assess your times and all also we have ullas if you remember from rajni anna class back here in chennai on his april rs4 man this looks sexy i see that you did some mods already yeah. some mods here yeah yeah I just uh, two mods okay one is the hose pipes okay the other one is the exhaust and the air filter oh best uh, all uh, stock yeah. nice Intermediate, right? Yeah. Last fighter that you saw is Arun. Man, I'm glad he came to the session and he's enjoying it quite a lot. We'll have his opinion once we head back to the hotel. But from what I hear from the coaches, he's also learning and picking up things quite pretty fast. I've taken it a bit easy this session today. We have one more tomorrow. Uh, the main reason is we came in at what 1 a.m. in the morning, got up at like uh, 6:30. By the time we reached the track, it was 8:50. So we, I didn't want to push too much because I didn't feel like uh, getting tired and exhausted for tomorrow. I want to have some more energy for uh, tomorrow session where I'll push a bit. But that being said, I'm definitely faster than my previous RC experience here and obviously much much faster than the RTR 200 experience last month. So kind of a good day and the weather helps. Chalo. I think uh, the rest of the guys are uh, also here from level 1. We just need to pack and head back to the hotel, edit this video, maybe do some workouts. Uh, there's one running session due. Once that's done, uh, I'll just sleep early, man.
hopefully tomorrow i can push it a bit while being safe and also measure the times anyway let's get to the hotel and uh, see what arun thinks of the today's session reached the hotel like uh, two and a half hours back worked out went for dinner decent dinner but <laughs> few things can't be on camera like what we have eaten it's okay for me but for him <laughs> <laughs> it is the biggest cheat you had in a long time it's a very dark cheat <laughs> <laughs> it's a cheat where you feel you've cheated yourself <laughs> <laughs> so how was the first uh, track experience ever so many uh, thoughts to process mm. um overcoming uh, you know the fear of riding your bike hard mm. consistently i think for me what was getting to me was maintaining that focus uh, lap after lap those sure. first few laps i knew the reference points i was getting the braking right mm. but then when the moment somebody would overtake me i would there, no. yeah you try to keep your ego out of it you're like hey i'm here to learn you know do <laughs> throttle control this that all that jazz but yeah extremely extremely tiring but at the same time so overwhelming in terms of okay. uh, especially the two ono Ah. Uh, it's so much more as a, as a motorcycle than I could have ever there imagined. There are more Aprilias on the track today than uh, any Panigale or S thousand other. That that was a surprising thing for me. Yeah. Like I think Aprilia was over the last couple of years have become very popular. Hmm. Uh, that was not the case when I got the Tuono back yeah. in twenty nineteen, where so many people were like, "What's a Tuono?" Or <laughs> even Aprilia as a brand wasn't very popular. Yeah. So good to see so many RSB fours. I think mine and Shumi's two owners were the only yeah. two two owners. Any uh, tense moments or close calls on the track? Yeah, there was one where my bike slightly misshifted. I think I didn't, uh-huh. you know, push the shifter hard enough. So the back kind of jumped, uh-huh. and uh, you know, I was obviously doing very hard acceleration. The bike kind of jumped, okay. but then the bike sorted itself out. Like I didn't have to do any panic reaction or anything. But mm-hmm. that was a slight scary moment, and a bunch of times when I. overshot my breaking points yeah, that, um that happens i mean there is enough width in the track so yeah. even if you go deep into a corner you just break yeah. you know break yourself enough you just give yourself time and you come back in mm-hmm. the only scary part of it is not the loop i mean i'm not scared to go into the dirty side of it um i know that i can break in time but then you are rejoining the line you don't want somebody coming yeah, you know true. you don't want to spoil somebody else's not run. everyone's at the same wave length no? That's the huh. problem with all these track sessions, and the, these level one, two, and three sessions are some of the uh, more controlled ones. I was kind of scared to do these open sessions because the number of people that come on the track and the freedom that they have and the uh, freedom to not follow rules is also quite high, and this happened. what happened in the background that you cannot see on the copro images there were at least 10 riders in the back straight and there were at least four or five on the left and like six on the right side and i was just uh, coming off uh, c3 i guess and then i the moment i turned my head up i saw all these riders on the left and right hand side and i didn't have anywhere to go uh, probably uh, i should have been prepared i thought i can overtake them one or two easily and just follow the flow but the no i went off the track into the dirt and there was it was so bumpy that the gopro on the ca- bike fell off it was a 3m sticky mount that didn't last probably it was not mounted correctly or that mount 3m mount was not strong enough and the gopro fell off for the entire session my gopro was lying in the middle of the straight and i was seeing people go by it i was going by it i can't stop and take you you're not supposed to like stop and pick it up like you do on the road so you have to inform the marshals once the session is done so that was another 15 minutes of me seeing oh, okay this lap no one crashed the gopro yet <laughs> and just hoping no one does it in the next few and once i went back yeah. i informed the marshals and then they picked it up another rider also lost a gopro so he uh, didn't get it you need to be lucky but whenever you're using cameras you have these lanyards which you can tie to the bike so that even if the mount comes off it will keep hanging on the bike and you can come to the pit lane leave it and go back finish the track session i also saw another aprilia crash decent crash 
Yeah, that and was. He uh, was uh, I felt really bad when you told me about yeah, that. Yeah, these things happen, but you need to learn. So if you do it stepwise, and he was perfectly fine, healthy, not even a scratch on him. The bike took most of the damage, and that's the reason we all say. I think the quotation is, "All the gear, all the time." Have gear even if it's a short ride in the city. It'll you never know where a hazard can come from or someone can hit you or. Worst case, anything can happen, right? So I think tomorrow it's pretty much the same for me. An open session. I'll clock my times this time because I'll get the transponder and measure the times. They charge thousand rupees for a transponder. So in case you want to have uh, for the entire day, uh, yeah. you can just keep it. Originally, I was planning to use the GoPro to calculate, but then I thought GoPro is more expensive than thousand rupees. <laughs> and I've shot many uh, track videos as such, so people would be kind of bored. Uh, Mm. seeing the same stuff no, this video is more about uh, the isuzu getting the pickup uh, i didn't show them how we unloaded the bike today but we were in a hurry so we'll show you tomorrow and uh, we were kind of in a hurry i think we went like right at the nick of the time 850 luckily the bike was unmounted kind of fast and the registration yeah you i think picked up all the steps from prasid very well <laughs> so we unmounted the bike pretty fast without any hassle and thankfully but we didn't have to mount it back after the back oh, back tracks that would have been a, a bit yeah. more of extra work but i think this mount mounting system is pretty easy now i think we figured it out tomorrow but will be the mounting of it again i think the only thing is if it's if there is no automated system winch you have to have two people put it Push up it, but yeah. then the ratchet straps are still the same Yeah. So if you have like more bikes, you can do without the winch. Yeah, I saw a um, Tata Zenon with two mounts. Yeah. But so that was the it. same guy, the Aprilia guy. So Achha. he got a Tata Nex Zenon. He said that till 2019 they're selling for private customers. Hmm. So that's why he was able to get it and. Uh, yeah, but his mounting system required him to sort of back into that, you know, yeah. that um, um, that mounting area. Hmm. Little complicated. You can't do it from the ground up, and yeah. considering how high the Isuzu is, it would be a challenge to do it like that. That's the experience of uh, getting the Isuzu. Then also, I'll give you a brief glimpse of my times. Hopefully, they, it's coming down. Chalo, we are. We need to sleep. We had a busy and tiring day, <laughs> and he. Uh, I think first time, I guess you had such an experience of a track day. Later, uh, back to back, back, back to, to back, 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 and then uh, we got up at. We reached here one o'clock, slept around two o'clock, <sighs> woke up at seven. So, can't wait to get some sleep. Catch you guys tomorrow. And the other side too. Wait, I think. Yeah, we can load the bike now. Now you remove that. It goes back up, no? Now you have to lock it at the bottom there. and then now we load the bike now we don't do that now we leave it in so this won't come up so roll the bike in then we lock it yeah go on wait go back yeah 